Okay, so what I'm going to cover today is actually how to make sense out of bad art. Everybody understands, I, I'm taking it, everybody here is either well familiar with the Sierra Optic software uh, or has worked with it, worked within its parameters. And uh, I, I believe everybody understands that there is four steps to creating any design that has to be done every time in the software. Step number one, and if you're taking notes, good idea to do so. Step number one, we need art. We need some kind of graphic that we need to, that we can use to convert graphics to rhinestones or spangle, whatever whatever bling option you're going to use. Step number two, we must graphic in order to fit the customer's desires. Step number three is we need to convert all objects in the graphic to the the the, the right uh, size, uh, stone, rhinestone or color. And step number four, we need to save our design and export it to our machine type, okay? Now, whether you're using a, a, a cutter or whether uh, to you to cut out flock material to actually brush and bake your rhinestones on the transfers, or if you use an automatic machine, the same four steps will actually take place. By the way, if anybody has any questions during the, the, the uh, webinar, please feel free to ask. All right, so I'm going to get started. First of all is understanding what kind of artwork you have. There'll be more times than a few that you will actually get uh, design concepts from a customer, whether it's uh, thought, uh, thought out and written down in words, or whether it's actually uh, um, drawn out on a napkin or, or something like that, um, or you'll actually get good graphic, okay? Whether the graphic is a vector or whether the graphic is a JPEG or what we call rasterized images, we can all use those softwares in here. Matter of fact, you don't need a vector format design to work effectively within Optic Fair. The only time you would need a vector is when some, some other changes need to take place. So what we're going to do, we're just going to walk through the four steps real quick so everybody's well familiar. Uh, I'm going to go to images and um, I'm going to go to my desktop. And uh, what we have here is in the desktop I have a folder called Clip Art Images. Yeah. Actually, I could do that, or I can just go to File, Open, and I'll go to the desktop, and here's my clip art images, and we're going to go ahead and do this one first, okay? So I'm just going to click on Open. Now, this is just a graphic I grabbed on the Internet, okay? And uh, it's actually a pretty clean graphic, okay? Most graphics that you will have will be rated in resolutions. You can see when I'm looking on the internet, we have a graphic resolution of 547 by 321. Um, I don't like to use graphics from the internet only because they may be copywritten and I may be breaking some code or some laws, but in our, what we're gonna do today is actually we're just gonna work with one of these graphics, okay? If you have a graphic that's actually not from the internet but from a client, then what you can do is if you go into that clip art folder and if you right click on your graphic and you go to properties and you go to details, it's going to show you what the resolution is. This is a 96 DPI resolution image, okay? Uh, that's, a, that's a low resolution image. When I go to the uh, soldier here and I go to properties and I go to details, we can see we're still dealing uh, with the 96 DPI. Right, but look at the pixel quality, okay? 2,325 pixels in, uh, in white and in, in width and uh, 3,300 in, uh, in, uh, in X. When we go to a lower resolution image like this flag, and I go to details, we can see we're only 224 pixels by 224. This is a, a substantially lower graphic resolution here. Sometimes you'll get good graphics. Now, let's say the customer wants this. Uh, uh, they want it sized to a certain length, but they want the exact copy of this graphic uh, in rhinestones. I do not need to convert this to a vector in order to get good graphics, okay? Uh, let me just make sure there's no questions. Okay, good. Hold on one second. All right, so, okay, so. The first thing I do is, step number one is done, I got a graphic. Step number two is I need to edit that graphic, and that could be just simply resizing the graphic. 
which we want to do here. So if I go to layout, I could change the size of the graphic right from here. Um, I could do so because you can see that my bounding box is touching all four quadrants of the graphic, okay? Now, there are some graphics that you'll bring in that are going to be of a lower resolution that may not be touching. So let me go ahead and bring in another graphic file and show you what I mean. So I'm going to open image. I'm going to clip art. Let's grab this one here and drag it in. You need to hit open on that. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and grab this and let me hit open this time. Open, graphic file, open an image. Uh, even this one here is touching all four quadrants. If our graphic was not touching all four quadrants, then to resize, what you have to do is in the layout menu, you would go to set size here. And let's say the customer wants this uh, eight inches tall. You measure the length or the height of the, the height of it. And when you release it, what you measured will be highlighted here if you're just measuring the graphic, okay? So I type in 8.0, and now our graphic will be eight inches. Again, this is only if the white background and the bounding box is not actually touching the leading edge of our graphic. The next step I wanna do, let's get rid of this guy. The next step I wanna do is actually clean my graphic up, okay? You can see along the leading edges of where color meets color, we're gonna have this trans transitional color uh, called a bleed, okay? And we can see our primary royal blue is bleeding into the white with a lighter baby blue. And so we want to clean those up. Uh, I don't really have to do it on this one here, but let's say if I go to hotfix and I want to set a uh, fill pattern to this and I use my autocomplete method, if I click on something and the running ants, you know, you'll see the running ants right here, are not clean, okay? You can see right here how the dotted lines is not coming up to the corner here. That's because the color that I selected is the only thing that got selected. This is a different color than this, so it does not get selected. When I click on the star, you can see how jagged those lines are. And when I click on the rest of the field here, you can see how jagged our image actually is, even though it's a higher resolution image. So we do want to do the first step and that's actually uh, uh, reducing the colors of our graphic. All right, so what I'm going to do is, let me go to questions here, let's make sure there's no questions. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click on the graphic, and you're going to go to color reduction. Now, I'm going to tell it to look for up to 32 colors. You can see it's reading the graphic down here. Once it reads it, it'll display on screen. If I click on filter, it's going to show me up to 32 colors, and there you can see all the different colors of blue, the different colors of white, the different colors of red, and even the different colors of black uh, that it's seeing. So we want to reduce this to the primary colors of the design. We have a blue, which is color number one. Color number two will be white. Color number three will be black. And color number four will be red. So if we choose to reduce the color up to four, and then hit filter again, it'll show us the after effect showing us our primary four colors. So there you can see, now we just reduced our graphic up to the primary colors. When I hit return here, by the way, you always want to look at the before and after. For instance, if you didn't, uh, if you didn't see a color on the first time you reduced, it will start to marry similar colors together, like the black may get married with the blue, as you can see right here, it turned into navy, because black mixed with royal blue makes navy. And it does not look like the, the, uh, the original image. So, uh, redu so adjust your reduction in colors, click on filter, and make sure that the after, after image looks the same as the previous image. Once we go to four, we get our royal blue back, and I'll hit return. So now when I go ahead and magic wand our graphic, 
you're going to see that the, the running ants, okay, now I'm going to autocomplete. Now I'm starting to cut into those edges, even along the black and all the stars. I click on the stars, the whole entire star is actually selected. So we have a question. And let's see, won't that be taken care of if you convert the vector? The problem with converting the vector is node management, okay? Uh, nodes are actually objects in the graphic that control the shape from one property of the graphic to the other. For instance, if I click on this graphic, and let's say the, uh, if I convert the vector, always want to hit filter here because it's going to show you the, the colors that you have. And if I had 32 colors in here, I'm going to have a lot of nodes. Now, this is not going to convert too badly because I first clean the image. Uh, the re other, re other thing you want to do when converting the vector is looking at the transparent. Anything, any color that's listed in the transparent will actually be deleted. And I need to maintain these stars in order to cover, uh, in order to convert them to stones. Um, it shows the white because I actually have a white background to this graphic. Okay, so when I click on vectorize here, and we'll just uh, we'll just uh, choose no transparency. So I need to maintain my white in the design. You have the white in the flag and the white in the stars. And when I hit return, what you're going to have now is you're going to have nodes. Okay, when I click on this blue, you see these see these white dots? They're nodes. Okay, and depending upon the clarity of my image, is going to determine how many nodes I have. When you have nodes that are grouped together like this, this the object shape is more complex to accurately fill with stones um, to a more uh, consistent look, okay? When I went to the original, let's go to the original image, okay? Let's, let's go to this one here. Let's convert this to vector. Let's go ahead and tell it to look for up to four colors. I'll choose my transparent as none. I'm going to hit vectorize. You're going to start to see some of your, your finer edges here, because of the color migration here, is now rounded, okay, because of the amount of nodes it had to put in there. So to get the after object the same as the cut as the other object, you would have to minimize the distances between nodes and maximize the amount of nodes you're using to control a more uh, complete shape. When we do that, we start to in, incorporate other colors. So now... Um, Converting the vector is not always your best, best thing to do. Instead, for this graphic, if I do the color reduction and I tell it to, uh, let me go to filter, let me show you how many colors it sees. You know, it's only, it's only showing me up to 32, but I bet you if I put 256 colors in here, because it's such a low resolution image, it will see 256 colors. And so it's only going to show me 32 here. So I'm going to reduce the four colors. And uh, I don't need this um, clear here, so under this gray, I'm going to click on three colors, and there's my red, white, and blue. Okay, now when I want to convert this to rhinestones, it's going to be no problem. Uh, let me go to hotfix here. When I click on my magic wand, you can see that it is seeing the graphic pretty cleanly here. Okay, even though I have some uh, issues. Um, uh, with the white, you know, with the red outline here. Uh, you know, I, I, there's still, still some work I have to do to this graphic, okay? Uh, let me see the other question that we got. Uh, let me see. Was, uh, will this webinar be available to view later? Yes, all our webinars are viewable on a website. You just got to give us a couple days to edit the, the video for audio uh, quality. And... Um, uh, let me see, okay, and then I got to never mind. Okay. Okay. What we want to do is actually we want to take the least steps possible in creating a design because the least step possible gets us to the production stage of actually running the design. So if I do not have to convert this to vector, then I won't, I, I won't do it. But let's say, for instance, the, custom, the client does not want the stars in here in the graphic. Well, that's a change that's not available in the original graphic, so therefore I would have to convert this graphic to a vector so I could uh, use a tool called Remove uh, Holes, okay? Now, I already converted this to a vector. You can see all the nodes there. Uh, when I have, I, you have this tool called Remove Holes, which removes all those holes unless they're actually outside the graphic. So let me just do this. Leave the white background here. 
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll delete all these stars. Now, some of them are not touching the edges. We'll actually delete, and I have a solid blue, uh, a solid blue uh, thing. But anything that's touching the edges will actually still, you'll see the background color. So I'm going to click on this star here, get rid of it. And we'll get rid of these three up here. This will delete to a blue field. That will delete. And this will delete. So now I'll click on it again. And uh, I can't use remove holes. So what I would have to do is delete these nodes. Click on any node. Right click. Select nodes by rectangle will allow me to select all these nodes and delete them. We already have a node selected here. So I'll go to select nodes by rectangle. Just draw a box around the nodes you want to select to delete and delete them. You see now we'll, we'll have this one node here that we have to delete. So I'll click on the node and, and delete it. There we go. And then we'll then we can do the same thing here. Select any node, right click, select nodes by rectangle, draw a box around the nodes that you want to delete, and just delete them. Same thing. I want to maintain the line nodes right here. Now we'll just reshape this. This node is actually right up here. It's a little bit twisted. You want to, node management is very crucial here. We have a corner here, and we have a round node here, which is a curved node. And you can see that it is selected as a curved node. I want to change it to a corner node. Just click on corner. Well, select the node first. There it is. And now I can control this as an actual corner. Make it straight, drag it into place. And you always have these be uh, Bezier grips right here where you can actually control the shape from one node to another. And there we go. That's close to what I want. But I think you get the idea. Because our graphic requires some other editing that was not available in the original JPEG, I did have to convert to vector, and that's the only time you really have to convert it to a vector. So let's kind of start this graphic over again. Let's go and grab it. We'll go to File. We'll go to Open. Open an image. Click on the graphic and open. Okay. First step is actually editing my graphic. So I'll go to Layout. Since the bounding box is touching all four sides of the graphic, I could just resize by the size dialog box here. Remember, if your bounding box is not touching the graphic at all, then you'll have to use set size and draw a line on your height or length. And whatever you measured will be highlighted here. So I can set this to 8.0 inches. Now it's 8 inches in height. Step number two, step number two is still editing the graphic. You know, I will go to hot fix, I will choose a fill. I uh, use autocomplete, which gives me my magic wand, and I'll see how quality the graphic is. Whenever you see these jagged edges, we know that we have more work to do yet to our editing. And that would be, you can see right here in the blue. So we know we have to reduce our colors that's actually the graphic. So click on the graphic, color reduction, set it to the, the basic primary colors. Sit there and count your original graphics, uh, the colors in your original graphic and set your reduced colors to that number. Uh, so we have four colors in here, so I'm going to reduce the four colors, hit filter. I'll wait for the after object, which I want to make sure looks exactly like the original. And then we hit return. We have a question here. I don't understand why you need the bounding box. The bounding box is actually the the selection tool that our, that our that our object uh, to select our object. Uh, the bounding box is that gray square that you see right here. You see the, the point nodes right here, the resize nodes right here. You got, they're gray, and there's going to be nine. Uh, there's going to be nine uh, eight of them. There's six. There's three across the top, three across the bottom, and two on each side. Okay. These are, this is called your bounding box. This actually is, without it, you don't see it. Select your object, and then you see the bounding box come up. Okay. So now what we want to do is, now that our graphic is edited, now it's time to actually convert all the objects of our image to rhinestones, okay? 
So step number two is convert to, to rhinestone. So what I'll do is I'll look at my image and I'll determine what parts of this graphic need to be two millimeters, what, graph, what part of the graphic I can do three, and what part of the graphic I can do four or so on. I know the stars are the smallest part of the object in this graphic, so I know the white, the clear stones, are going to be SS6s, okay? The black, I could probably do SS10s. The blue, uh, I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do SS6s in blue here, only because it's right next to an SS6 clear stones. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I'm choosing uh, two, uh, SS6 stones uh, for that. And then the red, I could probably do SS10s uh, as well. So we'll set up our catalog first of the stones that we intend to use. I do not like to work with a master catalog here because it just makes the, uh, the selecting of the right stone a little bit more complex, okay? Even though I only have 11 stones in here, when you first install the software, there'll be every color and every size stone in there. And it just takes a longer period of time to find the right stone. You put your mouse over and it pops out with this fly out that this is a clear crystal color that's SS10. Instead, I just like to go into my catalog, sweep this out, and just add the stones that I intend intending to use. Uh, so you choose your type of stone, which is going to be standard round. Choose your size stone, and then choose the color and add it to the to the box. So now I'm going to choose cobalt and add it to it. We'll choose an SS10 stone, SS10 stone, and I'll use black diamond, and I'll add it. And then we'll use our, then we'll find our light cyan. And we'll add it to our, our catalog as well. Now, if you make a mistake with choosing a color, let's say you want to go with a cyan alabaster, okay, like this one here. If you click on the stone that is wrong in the box or, some, or one you want to change, just click on the new stone. You'll see this yellow arrow, which actually changes that stone. The red stone, I mean, the red arrow pulls it out of the box. So I'll choose red. I'll add it to it. That's the new stone. And then I'll hit accept. The reason why I'm going with black diamond is that it's quite possible that I want to put this, this graphic on a black shirt. If I use a black rhinestone or a rhinestone, I may not be able to see the details of the, of the silhouette of the soldier. Using a black diamond stone gives you that transient color of lightness there that will actually give you a little bit better iridescence where you, the, eye, the human eye can actually detect the, uh, that the stones are there. So one of the common questions I get is, how do I, what do I convert first? Do I do the stars first, or do I do the blue uh, field first, or do I do the black first? You always want to do, the stars are the smallest part of the object in the design here. And I, I don't want to do them first, because if I do the stars first and then do the blue second, then if, the, if there's overlaps uh, where the clear stones are underneath the blue, it'll delete the clear stones. And I don't want that to happen. I would rather uh, have the blue first and the clear stones on top of the blue. So when I do my overlaps, um, when I do my collision, uh, you know, the, the, actual tool, the actual tool name is solve overlap. When I do my overlaps uh, solving, it's going to delete the blue, which I have a lot more stones in blue than I do clear. Okay, so I'll do it both ways. Let me click on the clear stone, click on the type of fill I want to use. I'm going to set my bead space into probably three or four. I'll do four. And I'll use autocomplete here. And let's go ahead and start doing these stars. So I'm going to hold my control button. And I'm going to select all these stars. And I can just close this. Let's just move that guy. There he is. So I'm holding my control button so I can multi-select different all the different stars in here. I will not select these these areas right here. Um, I'll just place those stones in myself uh, to save me more time than actually moving the stones because it will overlap the black a lot. So I choose what I'm going to do automatic and what, what I'm going to do um, through manual methods. And then I'm going to start doing the, the, the white parts of the image here. So I'm selecting everything here, pretty much. Once everything is, is selected, I hit enter. And there's my stones, okay? So what I like to do also is I like to uh, turn off my image 
and I do like to turn off my grid, and I do like to change my background color when I'm using light color stones to get a better visual on my graphic, what needs attention, what doesn't. You can see all the stars here are not really well filled or defined. So I'll go ahead and start selecting all these stars, and I'm going to reduce the, the spacing on them. I, uh, so I get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, look to the stars, a little bit better look to them. And to affect all the stars at one time, you want to go to Object Manager, and there's the, there's the fill right there, the, the bead spacing. So I'm going to set it to three. And let's see how that looks. That looks a little better. It's not exactly clear, but I think the customer will understand that they are stars. So now we'll go ahead and choose our blue stone. Click on our fill style. Choose our bead spacing. And then I will click on autocomplete. Click where the blue goes. And click on enter. I will click on select object and I will immediately go over here and adjust my beat spacing. And let's take a look at that. Let's turn off our image. And you can see how the, the stars are actually being covered up by the blue. So when we do our, our overlaps, it's deleting all the stars. And I don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and redo this. Let's get rid of this guy. And I'll just undo Control Z. There we go. So let's. Yeah, there we go. I just got rid of all my stones. Let's go ahead and recreate. Let's, this time here, we're going to do the blue first. Okay. So I'm going to click on Auto Complete. Click on the blue first. Click on Enter to apply the stones. Come down here. Change my bead space into three. Once I go to select object, there we go. There we go. So now I'm going to turn off my hotfix, and I'm going to click on uh, the new the clear color. By the way, you want to incorporate these steps that I'm doing here. Number one, choose the color you want to work with. Then choose the fill pattern you want to use. Choose your tool that you want to use. And then adjust your bead spacing. If you do that, then you can just go right ahead and start, and start converting. Hold your control button down. Now, if you accidentally selected the blue field, just click on it again. And it's always better to zoom in. Uh, I always recommend using a mouse when working within the software. It's just a little bit easier to target what you're trying to select than using the glide pad of your laptop. And then we'll select all the other white. There's another way you can do this. You do well, if I had a vector here, it would outlay all the images, all the parts of the vector here. Uh, but we have a JPEG, which everything is grouped together, so it doesn't give me that uh, that ability. And the last part, just hit on Enter, go to Select Object immediately, since everything is still selected. By the way, the reason why I'm using an object inspector is because it's the only tool I have to select everything and then affect the bead spacing with. Uh, in other words, if I'm not using the object manager, I gotta click on each section and adjust the bead spacing here. Uh, if you multi-select different parts of the design, you can see my bead spacing goes away and I have to do it from the object inspector here. So I use that all the time. So I could choose what I'm effect, what I'm actually adjusting here. And you can see all the parts. Of my, there's my blue. Here's my clear. You can see the parts are actually being selected as I click on them. And these are actually out of view right here. So I'll select the first one in the list. Go down to the last one in the list. Hold your shift key. And it selects them all. And then you can adjust speed spaces. So now let's take a look at our image. Now let's go ahead and do our overlaps, and you can see that the white will stay on top and the blue disappears, okay? Now, the size of this graphic is not allowing me to get a better detail. That's because I'm using two millimeter stones, 
uh, and there's little detail I'm going to get. So I may be forced to actually insert a hotfix and just build these stars up manually where they, there just wasn't enough room to actually fill it in. See, I could actually get that star to look better just by adding the stones later, which I thought I'll probably do in this, in this design. I'm going to turn back on our images. And now we'll just go to the next part of the design, which is going to be the uh, red. Go to select object. We'll go to, to the red stones here. Uh, and I'm doing the red because the red is actually behind the black uh, silhouette. So I'm going to choose to fill. And I'll start clicking on the red objects. Hold your control button once you have the first one selected. And you can add all the rest of them to your selection method. Once you have them all selected, just hit the enter button to apply those to rhinestones. Adjust your bead spacing on them. There's my red, so I'm going to choose all my red. And I'm going to see if the graphic looks good with five stones or five bead spacing. That don't look too bad. I may choose to do, uh, instead of a radial fill, a hexagon fill in here, because it, it will give me a little bit more stones in these areas. Okay. Okay, so there's our graphic so far. Now, by the way, this graphic will be a little bit better if I resize. So we'll show you what the difference is. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the black stones, choose the fill, click on the, the, the soldier, and hit enter. Save this for sure. Okay. And there we go. So let's, let's turn off our graphic image here and let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, at any given time, you can change a stone. Just go ahead and uh, uh, click on the bead style here. Go to add a bead. And I'll choose the black. It's already sees that I have an SS10 black diamond. I, all i got to do is choose the new color and hit add. And it becomes available in my bead list. Okay, so let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the graphic. And I think everything looks pretty good. So let's get and do our overlaps. We'll solve those. And now we'll turn our background color back to a, uh, a lighter color. And see what our graphic looks like. That don't look too bad, actually. Um, I do have a couple variances here, okay, which I can just move that. But uh, if this graphic was just a little bit bigger, I'd probably have a little bit better look to it. Uh, and less work I got to do. So we just increase the size by two and a half inches. We get a little bit better fill. Whenever you edit something, you do have to re the overlaps. And we'll change our background color one more time. We'll change it to a, uh, we'll change it to uh, black again. And you can see we're missing, uh, let me see. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good actually. Do a hexagon fill on the stars, maybe. You know, you, you do want to change the different fills to see which one looks better. I think the hexagon's going to look better than the radial. Ah. Let me undo that. That was supposed to be a star. A uh, hexagon. See, hexagon, what it does, it staggers the stones. you got two... You'll have two stones and then one stone uh, underneath the two stones in the middle, right at, right, in the, right at the dividing part of it. And by the way, I could change all these in one shot if I just if I select them. Hold your control button. They'll start disappearing from the screen, and then I'll change the style of the fill. Oop, that was the blow. So let me deselect the blow. Just move up a little bit. There we go. Right. You can change it right from here. You see we're at radial fill in the object inspector. Just click on hexagon and it'll apply those new settings. Now that don't look too bad now. And I think there was a star here that I forgot. Yep, there it is, there it is right there. And I didn't didn't revert them. So what I'll do is I'll click on this one. I'll, uh, 
I'll hit control C and control V, which copies and pastes. I'll put him right in place. And then we'll just go ahead and sweep out our overlaps. And there's still some work we have to do here, but I think you get the idea of how the steps are incorporated. Uh, let's see, we have a question here. Okay, um, okay, it is two, let me see. Why do we need the bound box to be answered that one? It's two a big enough space for a CAMS machine. Um, I'm not understanding about your question, is two, what, it, it, two a big enough space for a CAMS machine? What, can you elaborate a little bit on your question there, sir? Uh, okay, you set the spacing to two. Oh, yeah, on SS6 stones, I will put a spacing of two, uh, which is about a 20% of a gap between stones, okay? It's not doing a good job on the blue with that 20% because of the, 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 the amount of nodes that I have within the, within the blue area, which is the white stars. Um, so therefore, the two is actually going to get a little jagged as stones that could fit in here are, are deleted because, well, I'll show you why. Let me go ahead and just add a stone here. Let me go to hotfix. If I place a blue stone right here, and if I click on that stone, you see that, see that gray box? That's called the safe zone. If that gray box is touching any stone at all, then it will not put a stone in this place, okay? You can see when I, when I click on this one, it's not, it's not, that gray safe zone is not hitting any other, any other stone. You see right here, we're just right on the edge, although we are touching this one. I put this one in. That's why that one was deleted, if you recall. Um, over here, what we have is the border of this image. Let me go ahead and go back to a, a better, uh, uh, the white background. Why our edge is actually distorted is because when it actually, let's go to images. Let me turn off the hotfix. Let's move this guy up. There we go. Hold on. My mouse is tweaky. There we go. Move this guy up. When we selected the black to uh, for rhinestones, it actually saw both sides of this outline here. Uh, for instance, let me go ahead and do that. Let me go to hotfix. Let me choose a path file. And I'm just going to use a small stone. When I click on the black, you can see the two running ants. Well, it's going to see that as two lines of stones, and one of them is going to get deleted because it's overlapping. So when I hit enter, you see the two stones that it's trying to lay in there? Well, when I, when I did an SS10 stone, it deleted the one stone, uh, the one of these lines. Uh, so realistically, in this design, it would be a little bit better for me to convert this to a vector, and then I could separate the black outline from the object. Let me, let me explain what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Let me open up a new page here. Okay, and let's convert to a vector. As a vector, I have the ability to separate the outline of the of the of the cross from the from the soldier, and it's real simple to do. Uh, you're going to use what's called cut ve uh, split vector. There it is. Let me hit return. All right. So here's my here's my my black. When I select the black area, you see it incorporates the uh, um, incorporates the outline of the cross because the the black is actually married to the soldier. So what I can do is actually click on it and go to split vector, and I can start from any neutral area outside of the graphic. And I'm just going to hold my shift key, and I'm going to separate this. And I'm going to come all the way out here. And I'm going to come, I'm going to come around. And I'm going to come up here and separate it from the bottom, too. And work your way back out to a neutral area. And what we did is, oop, I did, I did too much. Let me undo it. Let me do it again. So I'm going to go from here, from outside the area. 
I've only chose black, so what I'm cutting is black. Even though I'm going to traverse through the white area, let me go up to where it's connected on the soldier. I'm just going to stay away from the black. Since the black is selected only, what I'm cutting is only the black. So I'm going to hold my shift key here to get a straight line. And I'll cut it right there. Hit enter. And what I did is I now removed this section of the cross from the soldier. Okay? And when I and now I'll have to do up here too. Right where it touches the soldier, this is where I want to cut. So select your object and just cut from a neutral area and work your way all the way outside to another neutral area. And I'll just come right out here. And then go to a neutral area. Let's go back here. I gotta work my way outside the cross without cutting the black, uh, without cutting the uh, any other black part except for where the gun comes through. Hit enter. All right, so now I now I change this. You can see what I'm what I what I've cut out so far, and then we have the cut here. So I'm, I'll just go ahead and click on this section here, and I'll go split vector, come straight up. Yep. Backspace undoes. So I'm going to click here, come up here. I'll get to your question in just a second. And I'm going to come down to the foot and separate the bottom section of this cross. Split vectoring tool is a great tool to use for cutting objects up that you don't need. And now we have separated the entire cross. Okay, so why I did that is simply this, because of this. You do have a tool under path that allows you to use what's called a center path. You remember, autocomplete was given us both edges of that outline. If we go to center path, it'll actually only put a bead of stone. Oops. One bead of stone right through that cross, which is what we wanted to begin with. So now we'll do this. Enter. It's not seeing that yellow there. But I think you get the idea. We have a question here. Let me see. Um, you set the spacing to two. Okay. So couldn't you use the center function to, in, in audibly? Yes. In order to get the center function, I did have to divide the cross outline from the soldier. So you, that because I had to do that, I had to convert my graphic to a to a uh, uh, to a, a vector. Okay. And there there it is. Let me just change the color of this. I think it's just not seeing the color. And then I can go to hotfix. Go to path file, and then we'll use auto complete. Uh, I mean, auto center path. But for some reason, it's not seeing this one. There it is. And hit enter. Okay. And that would give us a lot better look than what we had on the other one, where it actually uh, did two. It tried to do two lines of stones here. It, it, it creates a lot more problems with me as far as cleaning this graphic up. Okay. Let's still get started another graphic here. Any, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to open up a, a, another graphic that includes text. Okay, one of the most common questions we get is, how do I go about um, bringing in text graphics, uh, uh, graphics that uh, have uh, text involved with it? Let me see if I got one here. I think I do. This memorial day. It's a very dirty image, okay? I do not create text. I, what I do is I'll use the hotfix text or I'll create my own text in the artwork, in the artwork, okay, where I can bring in my own graphic. Uh, I don't rely on, the, on the, the resolution of the graphic to think that this is going to convert cleanly, okay? So the first step I have with this is actually size of my graphic, and I'm looking at my bounding box, and it is touching all four sides of my graphic so I could resize 
uh, from these numbers here, let's see if the customer wants his six and a half inches wide for a front chest. All right, you can see how very horrible my image is here. So we are going to reduce our colors, okay? And we're going to go to uh, deselect and then reselect, and the color reduction tool comes uh, up on the, on the ribbon. So we're going to go to three colors here, the red, white, and the blue, and we hit return. And now, the only thing I'm actually going to convert in this uh, to rhinestones are actually the stars. Uh, this, this, swoosh, this, this swoosh line I'm actually going to create myself. Um, and uh, the memorial, uh, I'm actually going to use a, a, a font that's similar to it uh, that I'll have. So what I'll do is I'll go to Hotfix. I'll add the stones that I want to use first. I'm now on step number three. So I know I'm going to need SS6 red. I'm going to need SS10 red, SS16 red. And I'm also going to go to an SS6 blue and an SS10 blue. My colors I'm going to choose here. And I'll show you why I'm going to use all those different sizes in red. So I'm going to choose an SS6, light cyan. SS10. SS16. And now we'll go to the SS6 in blue. Now let's use sapphire. And I'll use an SS10 blue. Oop. There we go. All right, we have a question here. How do I use rhinestone text from another source in Hotfix? It is, if it is a true type font in rhinestone in uh, in rhinestone circles, what it sounds like to me, Laverne, what you have is a PLT file that you used to use for uh, either a brush and bake method, or you actually bought from Bling Art USA or Rhinestone World. A PLT file requires an add-on function in the software, uh, which you purchase from Sierra, and allows you to bring those PLT files into the into the software, and they'll automatically convert to the rhinestones. Um, uh, it is not a PLT; it's a true type font. The true type font, if it looks like circles, like a rhinestone design, it's only going to see the circles as a shape, and it'll and what it'll do. It'll try to fill around that shape with rhinestones, not say, okay, this, this circle here is actually a three millimeter circle, and it'll replace that circle with a three millimeter rhinestone. What you can do, um, uh, what you can do is actually, if the font is actually, you can probably save it as a PLT, uh, out of Corel, um, let's see, out of Corel Draw, and then actually bring it in, that, that, uh, that PLT file in the Sierra software with the PLT import feature and convert those that rhinestone looking font that way to rhinestones. Okay? Uh, let, me, uh, let me get rid of it. See, I think I think I got that question. All right. So all right, so now we're going to start uh, converting our object. So what I'll do is I'll choose the first stone in the list, click on my fill, I'll click on autocomplete. There we go, and I'm going to turn on 3D mode so everybody can see what I did. And uh, I'm going to go uh, to uh, select object, and I'll change the, uh, the since, there we go. Let me take a look and see what that looks like. And does it look better like this? It might look better like that. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to keep it on a, on a hexagon. And I'll go to SS10. Oop. Deselect your graphic first. Uh, there we go. All right, and then we'll go to an SS10 stone. I'm going to autocomplete. I'll click on this guy right here and hit enter. And let's see what he looks like. I'm, I always turn my image off to see if I need to adjust. And I'll adjust as I, as I go through it uh, instead of going back later and, and getting it. And let me, let me see what, what looks better, three, or does that look better? Probably looks better with a four beat spacing. There we go. So I'll adjust on the fly. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do our, our blue. So I'm going to click on the SS6 blue. I'm using SS6 because I want to go from an SS6 to another SS6 different color to an SS10 because it, it graduates in sizes here, as you can tell. And I'm just doing that for perspective reasons, how it's going to look after the, after it's done. 
So I'm going to click on probably three here, and we'll go to hexagon fill. That was pretty good. Okay, so the reason why I'm, I'm using all these uh, SS6 cells is because of swoop. Our swoop starts from a small size, starts to graduate into a wider area, to the widest area here, and then comes back down to a thin. A lot of people actually just will, will just uh, choose a small stone and uh, try to fill the object with stones. Let's go ahead and try and show you what it looks like. Okay. And what they'll wind up doing is, have, uh, is, is they'll have to adjust the shape and you know, maybe go into a maybe go into a uh, hexagon fill to get the right look. And it never really looks good. Instead, I, I can minimize the amount of stones I'm going to be using in the design um, by using a different method. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, SS6 stones first. I'm going to go to hot fix and manual hot fix. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to place a couple stones along here. And then we're going to, once we get to the next section up, oop, we will actually, uh, by the way, let me just set something up here. I want to, in the options tab, you do have customized shortcuts. And uh, in order to stay zoomed in and then move my object without, without having to go to a different area on my, on my viewable screen, uh, I'm going to use the uh, pan tool, which is the hand tool. I'm going to assign a hotkey to it. And I'm just going to find it. Here, there it is. I'm going to assign F1 to it. Hit the checkbox. Now, what that allows me to do is instead of zooming out and zooming into different areas, I could stay zoomed in, hit the F1 button, and then move my graphic while staying, staying zoomed in. This will increase your production flow by doing so. So now I'm going to start with an SS6 stone here. I'm going to go to an SS10, and we're just going to graduate the width. Don't worry about getting that last stone in there. And then from here, we'll, we'll go ahead and go to uh, Hotfix. And we'll do a path line. And uh, yeah, we're going to start right from here. And I'm just going to stay zoomed in. I'm going to hit my F1 button. Stay right in the middle. And right here is where I'm going to go. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to go to an SS16 stop. We'll continue this shape. Let me go right about here. I'll end with the SS16 stone. Uh, I'll go ahead and go right back to it. Adjust my bead spacing. It defaults to 19. So I'm going to set it to 5. Okay. Turn the image back on. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll click on SS10 stones again, and I'll just place the rest of them in, only because I don't need a, a couple SS10 stones here. Right there, and then I'll go right back to the SS6, and I'll go to hotfix. Set your bead spacing. And imagine where the center of the stone, you don't want to start here. You want to start like where the center of the stone is going to place. Well, that'll help you in uh, not having to correct the file later. There we go. And now we'll do the same. Now we can do the same thing with the blue here. So I'm going to click on blue now. Set my bead space into two, and we'll we'll do the R. And you'll see the difference in quality that you're going to get from from graduating from a small stone to a large stone when 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 it's it's absolutely essential instead of just trying to tack it with a fill uh, and trying to work with the fill, how it actually filled the object, we're moving stones around. Let's turn off our image and let, let you see that. You see, you see how we capture it. Now the only thing I have to do is maybe some of the shapes I didn't place right. So this one here, I'll just click on the object and I'll just like move the node lines here just to make it a little bit better or rotate it. So it looks like it continues on. And then move the node lines in a little bit.
you get a lot better look to your graphic. And we're only using 144 stones instead of a whole bunch of stones that were in there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn our image back on. And for the and for these lines, I'll just use SF the six stones. Just a straight line right through the middle. I'll go to the blue. Set my bead space into three. There we go. Okay, so now for the text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hotfix text. I'm going to go to uh, uh, go to hotfix, go to hotfix text, by the way. If you are going to use true type fonts, make sure that they are true type fonts. There are many different type of fonts out there, especially from dafonts.com or freefonts.com or any other fonts that you can download free fonts from. Uh, you want to make sure that they're not OTF, which is open type font, uh, or, or, or there's many kinds. Uh, you want to make sure that you are downloading true type fonts because they're the only ones that will show up here. And it looks like this is like a Times New Roman. And I think it's got a, uh, 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 like a, like a, let's, let's go to a serif Roman effect here. And I'll look for the, this probably looks pretty good. I'll look for something that's bold, something that's going to give me a little bit more area for fill. And it is a serif font. Serifs are these little caps at the end of the, at the end of the uh, letters here. So I'm looking at, let's look at a letter. Uh, let's see, Memorial A. Let's see, I'm looking at the letter A right here. I'm going to find out. I think this is the right font where it's thin on one side, thick on the other. So I think it's it's this one here. It's probably a more of a time through Roman. This one here will work too. I'm just going to click on this one here. And uh, we're going to go to uh, an inch font. Let me, if, if you're not sure how big your font is, go to View and use your measure tool and measure your lettering here. Just go from the top, drag a line down, and it's, this is about, I'm going to do an inch font here, it's about 0 0.880. All right, so select object, hotfix text, and we'll choose, the, this. oh, Sarah Froman. We'll go down to that same font we had earlier. It's kind of, I'm going to use Times New Roman. It looks like it's a Times New Roman. Right, so there we go. So we'll set the uh, height of the font to one inch. And I'll type it out, Memorial. O. Uh, I'm not going to do the R. I'm just going to do the uh, I and the L. Leave it a space. So the R is actually part of an artistic uh, graphic, and the A is, is also part of the artistic graphic of the swoosh. So, by the way, if you want to see what your font looks like in the desired font, you just click on this tool right here, and it kind of shows you. I can see that the M is nowhere near this M. So you can actually choose a different font when you, when you do that before applying it to your graphic. Let's go ahead and choose this one here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this in, in the position. I'm going to size it. Size out a little bit better. Keep sizing out so, so you match the size. Just looking at one frame of reference, the M. Okay. Just center up the M on it. That looks like it's about the same size. It's going to go up a little bit more. The higher I go, the better the fill I'm going to have. There we go. Let's take a look at that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to, to right-click, and I'm going to uh, split hotfix text because I want to deal with this as individual letters here. See, now I got the M. It's not all grouped together. I'll hold my shift key in. Move this in. Let's click on that E. Let's position. Let me position the E. Let's click on the M. And this is a horrible looking font, by the way. We'll click on the O. Uh, by the way, we'll resize the M. Hold your shift key in. You're resizing from both sides. 
We'll click on the O. And it looks like the I that didn't even come in. There it is. We'll bring the I in. And we'll bring the L in. So the L's already in there, so I'm just going to move this over a little bit. And you can see all the nodes that it, 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 it tries to fill into this object here. So chances are, I probably wouldn't use a filled font. I'd probably, I'd probably be tempted to create this. You know, let's take a look at this. It's probably not going to look good at all. Yeah, you can't even make that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this my own self. The L doesn't look, looks like it's the best letter there. So what I'll do is I'll go to images and I'm going to create this a single line text, okay? Uh, but I'll do it my I'll do it my own way. I got a question here. The font is called Trajan. Okay, Trajan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know what kind of font that was. Uh, sometimes it, it's it's better to create your own fonts. Uh, I know that the uh, in the Hotfix font library, there, it only gives you like 10 uh, pre-digitized fonts here that, you know, there are more online, but they are a little expensive. Instead, I don't use those. I'll actually create my own uh, the same way that I was uh, I created the other one. Um, go to Hotfix. I'll go to Path. And I'll just create this myself. So I'll just start from here. Hold my Shift key. Well, I'm going to go to Straight Nose. I don't want curves. I'll come up here and enter. I'll do from here to here. And enter. Convert to an SS10 star. I'll go from here to here. Ah. Try that again. I do create my own fonts a lot in the software because, again, if I fill this word memorial with stones, I'm going to have a lot more stones on the run out, which is going to really decrease my production time. I want to get these on the machine and get it running as fast as possible. I also want to reduce the amount of consumables I'm using for any project. The, the less stones I'm using, but I got a great look, I'm going to profit more. Okay, if that makes sense to you. So I'm going to click here, come down here. And enter. I'll go to an SS6 stone, and I'll just place a couple stones here. So I've got a hot fix, um, just to get this serif. Now I'm going to go to select object. I'm just going to pop this up a little bit so it stays right on the line. Right click, insert hot fix, gives me right back to where I was, where I was adding stones. Okay. And you can see that's going to look a lot better than what I did when I had uh, the other way. Now, I've got some cleanup to do here, of course. I've got to change the angle, this end, this leg here on the end. Probably the bead spacing a little bit uh, needs a little bit of work. Uh, also, the, I, I need, let's just turn the image back on. And what I'll do is I'll just bring him down here. And what I'll do is I'll right-click, I'll insert a hot fix. I'll use a small stone right here. And probably do the same thing over here. Go to select object, so I'm dealing with the vector line here for this one here, just make him meet there. And we'll probably do the same thing right down here. Right click, insert hotfix, put a small stone right here. Go to select object. Just move the line out a little bit to make room for him. There we go, so there, that looks a lot better. There we go. I just can, now we just continue on. Just got to move that stone over a little bit more, and then you have it. I'm running out of time. It's 11.04. Is there any other questions? If I would just continue this out and then do the single line text on the day. I think it's the best way to incorporate uh, a better looking font style and text style to your, to your object instead of just 
do it automatic. There's great things that you can do automatic uh, conversion to rhinestones, anything that's shaped. But when you have a decorative element like this text does, it's always better to create your own text. Okay? If, if there's any uh, final questions that you may have, be happy to answer them.